Hey, welcome to Mad Dog's After Show. You're along for the ride with the Mad Dog and Cole, the Bionic Roadrunner, Feral. I only drag race to the 60 foot. <laughs> I decided to fly through the air and live in the sunlight and enjoy life as much as I could. And that's just what I'm doing. <laughs> Man, oh man, strap in for this one. It's going to be a goodie coming up with the one and only Russell Porter of Buggy Whips USA. First, want to be sure and thank our first responders, our service people, and all our military personnel around the world, including our veterans and the families of those that gave all families of the KIA and MIA props and respect. Thank you for all you do while we're thanking people. We want to be sure and thank kicker performance, audio kicker, audio kicker, Marine audio kicker, premium audio for all your 12 volt personal audio needs. Find them online kicker.com on Instagram at kicker audio on Facebook kicker. And of course, every other Tuesday night on their YouTube channel and Facebook, their live TV show, Kicker Unmasked Live. Of course, bomber eyewear, bomber floating eyewear, bomber safety eyewear, the only Mad Dog approved safety floating eyewear. Get yours now, bombereyewear.com. We're on Instagram at Bomber Eyewear. Of course, our dude Cole over at the Premix podcast, sharing his passion for all things desert racing through the lens of a camera. You can find him on Instagram at the Premix podcast. You can slide into his DMs and get him lined out to get some shots of you at your next desert race that he'll be at. He also has a great passion, great talent for announcing events and emceeing events. There again, booking for 2025 currently. Slide into his DMs, the at symbol T-H-E-P-R-E-M-I-X-P-O-D-C-A-S-T. Get him lined out for your next event or your next race. Of course, Kelsey Morale Film. Getting all of our video editing and editing done. And uh, man, for anything you need from pre production to post production, Kelsey Morrell Film has you covered, including stills and commercial video. Find her on Instagram at Kelsey Morrell Film. Of course, Hey Keeks Marketing for all your social media needs. All your website needs, whether it's build a new website, maintain a website, add a shopping cart, build a social media account, all the way out to full influencer campaigns. Yell, hey, geeks, or take the easy right. Find her on the webs, heygeeks.com, on Instagram at heygeeksmarketing. And as promised, the man with the big smile and the great hair. <laughs> Russell Porter, Buggy Whip Inc. What's up, brother? What's up, man? How are you? How's I'm life? great. I am great, man. Thank you for jumping on with us. Uh, appreciate it. I know how busy you are always, like <laughs> a thousand percent of the time. You are on the gas. I think you sleep like an hour a day. So uh, the I, older I get, the more I'm sleeping, but it's still not great. <laughs> I am very grateful for you to jump, be here and jump I'm on. I'm happy to be here. Ma'am, for those of you who don't know, if you have seen any of my kicker demo rigs um, or the sailboat we used to have, uh, you will notice right off the bat the incredible, bright, visible safety whips. <laughs> 
Buggy Whips Inc. It's the only thing I will run. You can find them online, buggywhipsinc.com. Um, and Russell is the brains and the brawn behind it. Um, and is very humble about it, but without a doubt, the best safe safety LED whip in the world. Well, thank you for your kind words. No, I mean, we, we, it's, it's definitely all about safety, right? At the end of the day, no matter how you use it, it's definitely all about keeping people safe, keeping you visible, making sure that you're able to go out there for that next ride or adventure, wherever it may be. Yeah, absolutely. And made in the USA. Yeah, we do everything we can. You know, there's, there's, when we first got into making LED whip, there was a big push to take it overseas. And you know what? Honestly, there's nothing wrong with products made overseas. There's a lot of great products out there that are made overseas. Um, but I want to do as much as I can to keep it here in America, right? As much as we can do yeah. to make that American made. My grandfather believed in that. And I, and I think it's just a staple of who we are. You know, build it here, use American work, do American things. And I, and I think it, it, it speaks volumes, you know? Yeah, absolutely. Well, and it gives you the quality control and the opportunity to get inventive, um, to custom do stuff like you did for my sailboat, yeah. um, you know, and on top of it, like you said, it's, it's keeping as much of the work and the money in the U S as possible. For sure. I mean, I think that's, that's anytime you can employ, you know, people in America and, and help out your fellow neighbor and, and get creative minds together. You know, one of the great things about doing things here in the United States is just the ability to thrive. Like you said, create, you know, custom, you know, one of the, one of the things that separates us massively from any other brand out there. And it's shocking. The other day we went through it and actually dove into looking at other brands. Um, we had one of our wholesale distributors really want us to break down every brand and show us why. And we went through it. We're really one of the only brands in the United States or anywhere in the world that can customize, right? No right. matter the voltage, 12 volts, 24 volts, 72 volts, 48 volts, we can do any color combination, custom LEDs, custom lengths. I mean, there is nothing we can't do. So if you can think it, and you can dream it, and you can have a purpose for it, we can build it for you. And I think that's really something unique that you can't find on anybody else's site, right? They walk in and whether they make it here or they make it somewhere else, they go, here's our platter, choose from this, right? Where we're right. like, what do you want? It's not, here's this, it's here's what we sell 90% of the time, but the other 10%, you pick it, you dream it, we'll make it. Sometimes- yeah. You know, it, it takes a little bit and takes a long time to get it. Um, one of the coolest projects that we're working on right now that we're really close, I got to actually follow up with the customer, but uh, we had a customer request to make a true American flag, right? So the correct number of stripes, the correct number of stars, and really put something together that's not just red, white, and blue, but all this guy's for the military, been the military. And I just thought it was such a cool project. I mean, it is an intense project, counting out every star and figuring out how to wrap it. But let me tell you what, when it's done, it will be phenomenal product. It is rad beyond speaking of words. That's that's crazy and honorable and freaking <laughs> awesome. Yeah. Uh, and not unlike you to take on something like that. That's like, man, yeah, <laughs> we'll give it a shot. <laughs> that is the problem. I, I won't say no to anything. Oh, right. <laughs> any project. <laughs> whatever, whatever it is. Yeah, you want to do that? Sure. Uh, let's do it. Why not? Yeah, let's give it a try for sure. Yeah. So. <laughs> yeah. Uh huh. Uh, that's awesome. Well, when when you were talking about the company and stuff, um, you brought up your grandfather, and I kind of want I want to get back to your history because, like, a lot of people everybody in the industry knows you as you know russ from buggy whips sure um everybody knows you're an avid duner you're an avid rider yeah um you've built some of the most incredible side-by-sides out there uh, thank uh, you i've had the honor to drive a couple um and uh represent them and and grateful for that but like where where did it all start for you like how how did you not just get involved with buggy whips, but like all the off-road where, where 
where did it start? What lit the fire? Uh, well, my family's been in, in all types of motorsports. I mean, my grandmother actually raced NASCAR before it was NASCAR Winston Cup back in the day. <laughs> um, and uh, my grandfather actually laid one of the first cable systems in the United States. And, you know, they did all kinds of stuff. They, my whole family's from the East Coast, Pennsylvania, and Massachusetts and that area. And then they one day, uh, you know, the story as it goes down is my grandma, my grandpa came home. My grandma's like, I'm done with the snow. And he loaded the car and left. <laughs> that was it. <laughs> they, they were gone. Okay, we're out tonight. And they moved it. They actually moved to L.A. Um, wow. And they lived in L.A. And my grandpa worked for Lockheed Martin and then started a CB antenna company. Um, and then my dad raced for actually off-road warehouse back in the day in 516. And uh, <laughs> they... My grandfather went down and did stuff with Parnelli Jones. And so they were they were just a, always part of the off-road community and racing and and things of that nature. And then um, so he started Buggy Whip in 1967 um, and started, went to Pismo Beach. And there was no whips before him. I mean, he started the whip industry. I mean, now right. it's, you know, there's <laughs> 2,000 whip companies out there and everybody and their brothers doing whips and you know, it's, uh, it, it's definitely changed a lot from when he started it. For sure. For sure. And what was, what was that? Like, you know, I, I don't want to jump off of, of like how you got started and where, where it came from you, but those first whips that he built. Yeah. Dude, there's still some out there. There is some, and that's a, and I, I think that's a testament of, of who we are. You know, he stood for building, a quality product you know he wasn't going to put anything out there that was junk you know i think that's one of the things that's really formed my opinion of business and and some may say it's good some may say it's bad but you know build something and and build it that you're proud of it you know make something that you can go out there and put your name on it and say i'm proud of that product right and yeah, absolutely and, you know he did that you know he created something that's lasted whatever it's been uh, i can't do quick math but 50 plus years now and there is product that's still out there. You know, there is still product that's out there. What, what's, what's probably the coolest thing about 56, 56 years. There you go. <laughs> what's the coolest thing to me about buggy whip and what's made me proud of this is there's, I hear endless stories of people that maybe don't have their dad's flat pan race car anymore. Maybe don't have their old dad's doom buggy. Maybe don't have a race car. Maybe don't have any of that stuff. But they still have a buggy whip, right? It's sitting in the top of their garage with their flag and they're talking about, <laughs> you know, hey, I remember the good times with my dad and my mom and my family out in the desert. I got rid of all the cars. I got rid of the gear. I got rid of that. But I still have the whip because it reminds me. Of it. So when you can take a product and tie it back to somebody's good memory of a family time or friend time or whatever that is. And that product still works and it's still in the garage. I mean, that's to me what this is about. That That's what makes this, whether it's, you know, there's multiple generations in mining out in Julian that run a gold mine. And I still see them at every mine expo. We got one coming up in September and they're still there and they come and they remember my grandfather and his grandfather remembers my grandfather and they remember going to his original shop. And so all that, you just see lineage of people that remember it and they have some memory, whether it's construction, mining, off-road that ties back to that. And so when, you know, we ran just the traditional fiberglass whip for from 1967 to 2015, and, and that product was great product. We still make it today. Um, it's changed and evolved, and it's it's got some different parts to it now, but the general basic of it is still the same as it was back then. And so my grandfather, you know, we get this question all the time, you know, did you create anything but whips? That's all he did. His and basically from the time he started it, 67 till the time he passed in 2015, that's all he did was whips. Right. Never created anything else. And I think that's rare nowadays, right? Most of these companies that you see nowadays, it starts with whips, then it's rock lights and it's whatever they can alter or change or get their hands on or create they just keep expanding the product line where well, we've stayed true to who we are that's all we do is whips you know yeah just the other day we had a guy call and go do you guys sell rock lights nope we recommend baja designs they, that's who we work with you know but it's it's one of those things where we stick to what we're good at and we don't change off that path we just keep doing it and doing it well well and that's it and that's the whole thing um you know not only do you 
keep doing it but yes you do it well and you know that that history of the whip it reminds me i i always think uh of our good friend super mario you know and i'm <laughs> i'm blessed to see him at, at a few rebel events i do yeah. a year and he's got that man that thing has to be a early 70s chinoeth uh yeah four seater like mm-hmm. one of the very first uh four seat tall cage they ever built as far right. as i know might even be the first one and he still runs he bought a buggy whip yeah. when he built that buggy when he bought it brand new or built it brand new and, and it still works it still <laughs> works yeah, yeah. It, it's yeah. it's a terrible know. business model it's terrible <laughs> <laughs> Jeff Bonnick's mailing like these computers and right? <laughs> every year every three months you know but we don't yeah. no we and that, have them fail but that's brilliant you know so all right jumping back to it and you're talking about you know how the memories and and um all that so sure. how russell is what how old on his first trip to motorsports or to the dunes or uh the you know or... i i'm sure i was in the dunes when i was born or a couple months <laughs> after i mean there's pictures of my dad you know i back in the day riding three wheelers with me and him on it and no uh helmets no nothing on old three wheelers out in the middle of time is <laughs> probably at three years old holding on to the handlebars you know so I'm sure I was very young when I first did the desert, you know, and I'm very, very young. And how did it grow from there? Like what, what happened from you, there? You know what's funny about, uh, about the desert? It's, it's a true story. So I had only done, yes, my dad raced race cars and that, but I had only really done glamorous. That was all I knew, all I had done. And so as as i you know let's get into when i was 16 so many many moons ago but when i was (laughs) 15 16 years old going to glamis it's all i knew right was right you know you came out in flip-flops and shorts and you got in your sand car with your you know drink in your one hand and you know no (laughs) helmet and uh and you dusted the car off the night before and drove it in the trailer because you didn't want it to get dirty so fast forward (laughs) to you know, 2015, I, and I, I, you know, take over by you up and create this product. And now we're trying to find new industries, you know, Jeep and muddy and all these different off-road communities. And I went to King of the Hammers. I'm like, well, what are you guys doing? Like, this is dirty. <laughs> <There's Right. nothing. laughs> what do you mean? You don't blow off your car at the end of this. You leave mud on it. Like, this is a thing you guys, this is, this is not what I know. This is not the sport <laughs> that I grew up in. Um, so now I have a passion for all of it, right? But but right. growing up in Glamis, it, what's what's interesting, and I was just talking to somebody about this the other day, UTVs have taken this world by storm and yeah. you, you have one product that can do so many different things, right? And it ties back to the whip. You know, we have one product that can be in so many applications, but every one of these is so unique, you know, Glamis is its own thing, you know, it's big horsepower, big suspension, big cars, right? It's about going fast. Everything's always clean. You know, I, I, I never knew that you didn't detail your motorhome trailer and car before you went to the desert. That, that I didn't even understand that that wasn't a thing. Right. And so right. then you go to mud Nats and, you know, <laughs> totally different, right? The cars are soaked in mud and they have a full-time pressure washer there. And, and then you go to King of the Hammers and it's dusty and dirty. And, and there's just, it's cool to see that the off-road community has so many segments of it. And although they're all different, vastly different in how they, how they work and what they do, they're all the same, right? It's still a community of off-roaders. It's still a community of people getting together to enjoy the off-road industry and the off-road sport, right? And it's just amazing to see how this has evolved, right? And so for us, it's the same thing with the whip, right? It originally was used in Glamish, right? There's laws, you know, you have to yeah. be feet above the ground. You have to have a red or orange flag on it, right? There's these laws so that people could be seen. And, you know, you're, I'll never forget the first time you and I went to EJS together, you know, what yes. an adventure that was. But Oh, boy. Oh boy, it was. But you go to somewhere like EJS where people originally looked at the whip and said, why would I use that on my Jeep? Why would I use this in this situation? Why would I try that? 
And now you've seen that they've taken it. And now there's this evolve and people are like, oh, I can see somebody that's a mile ahead of me on the trail. I can yeah. see through the dust. I can see where the leader's going. I can, you know, us old school Duners, we, I'm sure you remember, you go out in the dunes in the 80s. You knew if there was a witch's eye or somebody crashed, there was no radio communication. It was no. how whip moved. If the whip yeah. banged over somebody's roof. You hit the brakes, right? It was, yeah. <laughs> it was about to get sketchy real quick. So now you've taken that and people have learned those same techniques and applied it to so many other things, right? Whether it's mud or off-road or racing, even in Baja, you know, you're coming, you know, I still remember having these conversations with Justin Lofton, racing trophy trucks that were Adrian Oriana and you're racing down there and everybody's like, well, I want to be dark. Fine. Turn the whip off, but you're coming into the pits in the middle of the night. You're tired. Your pit crew's tired. You've been running all night long. Whose truck is whose? Whose UTV is huge? You flip the whip on all of a sudden you can take a process that's minutes long and cut it down to seconds. You know exactly who your driver is, where he's coming in. You turn whips on. I can now protect all these people around the pits. I can protect the vehicle. I can protect. There's so much going on. And it's just, it's so neat to see how far and creative people have taken the whip and what they've used it for and how they've top a sailboat. You know, there's just so much <laughs> yeah. use for the product now. And that's, what's been great seeing it evolve to today's time. Yeah, it's uh, it's funny. He said, uh, you know, top of sailboats, which I I think that was probably <laughs> six or seven years ago. Yeah, I probably. I touched base with you and I said, hey, I I need two foot, and you rarely did two footers back then. Sure. Now it's all you do. Yeah. yeah, I was like, I need a two footers, but I need a red one and a green one, and I'm going to put them on the sailboat. And you're like, you're out of your gourd like why would you do that and uh you know we had a we had a 25 foot tall mast or tall rig they call it sailboat and uh we're on a lake and it was very dark up in the mountains and uh you know i put them up on the spreader bars way up at the top and there was no question in at night you know where what was port and what was starboard you know right. it was like Matter of fact, uh, one night that the Viking and I spent on the sailboat at the docks, uh, we were just sitting there in the slip and I had the mast lights on and the uh, dock master came up and asked me to turn them off because it was too bright on the dock. I was lighting <laughs> up, you know, the whole dock. So, um, and now I see people running them on their boats all the time. Yeah. And I kind of laugh because like basically you know, you and I kind of started that, cut that ago. trend, you yeah. know? <laughs> well, the, the, you know, the one that I, I, the, the thing that I believe really strongly in and, and, and I struggle with it. So that I'm open to any idea of any way you want to use the product. I just don't ever want the product to turn into a mockery. Right. So I, right. Be, I don't want somebody to say, uh, and I don't know how you would even say that, but I don't want, I don't want to, to make something become a joke. Right. I think that's what took us so long to break through to the Jeep market and stuff is people just looked at Glamis and said, yeah, all they got is a bunch of dancing lights. I don't want that on my car. Right. Right. When you were able to show safety and you were able to show visibility and when you were able to show features and benefits, it started to change people. People were like, okay, I'm buying into this program now. But the one that I'll never forget was, um, and I'll never forget it to this day, is a guy had called us and wanted to put a whip on a Harley. He said, I'm tired of people nearly running into me and running me off the road. And I was like, all right, but a whip on a Harley, I mean, dude, this is going to look really bad. Like, cool. I mean, I'm game. I, I totally understand what you're going for. Never forget it. I was going down Interstate 5, and I was moving. We won't say speeds on here because it was easy, <laughs> but let's just say I was, I was in it on it and around it. And I saw this guy from over a mile away coming up behind me. And I thought for sure it was a police officer. I thought we're doomed. It's over. This is it. And <laughs> I started slowing down and pulling over. And sure enough, it was a guy I had talked to a month before on a Harley with a green whip sticking a foot over his head and drove right by me. And it, it made me realize in that moment that it was a great idea. He took something, yeah. he thought through it made it work and i talked to him afterwards and he had not had a single car almost collide into him after it so there's just so many great ways you can use the product and so many great ways 
that you can just improve your life and your safety and, and just the stuff around you with it. For sure. And, and, you know, really kudos to you for, for stretching those boundaries and, and really pushing it out there all around a quick jump back to the previous story. For those of you who don't know what EJS is, that's Easter Jeep Safari. So <laughs> you can Google it or whatever. There's, there's plenty of good info on it, uh, on the webs. Um, but yeah, it's, uh, you know, I do remember that trip and I remember a lot of the negativity. Um, and now it's not uncommon to see them, you know, and really, I mean, you go back to, I think when you and I first met and we even talked about putting them on race cars, right. uh, desert race cars and people were, there was a lot of people that were like, that's dumb. Yeah. hundred percent. Why would I do that? I, what's the power it draws? It's, it's, why would I use it? And yet now, you know, you look, at least 90% of every class 11 on the mob start at King of the <laughs> Hammers whip, yeah. has a whip. <laughs> yeah. And it makes sense. You know, when you're looking, I mean, kudos to you for taking everyone else's safety personally yeah. and really pushing the boundaries of everything, you know? It's important. I mean, it's, you know, you just, nobody realizes, I think we all get, you know, you know, one of the things that really brought this is I went to, um, we did a big ski annual ski event, um, that we do every year. And they went through that and talked about skiing and where skiing had started and where it is today. And, and I don't remember the year, so I'm not going to try to quote it, but let's just say 10 years ago, as an example, the amount of people that wore a helmet on skis and snowboards was 0.1 of a percent it was, it was almost negligible and they said there's no law saying you have to wear a helmet on a lot of these parks but they're up to a 98 percent of people wearing helmets now there's only two percent of people that don't wear helmets anymore right same thing in glamis right nobody right. wears a helmet to now uh, you don't see anybody get in a, uh, even a sand car anymore without a helmet right so it's it takes it takes evolving. It takes showing people that there's that there's a better way. It takes showing people that they can, and it just takes time to do it. And it's taken us a lot of years to to open that door to show people, hey, there is a better way. There is a safer way. Why wouldn't you want to be safer? And and people are starting to come around to it. Yeah, for sure. And and you know, it shows. I mean, for those of you who don't know. Um, hop over to Instagram and check out at Buggy Whip Inc. Um, because there will be a lot of comparisons of pictures of groups, and you can pick out the Buggy Whips there for sure. Um, absolutely yeah. the brightest, and I've beat the shit out of them for <laughs> for you. Um, at times and and uh there uh, i mean the durability is there i i tell people you know i have i have run some of your product very very hard very aggressively through the trees um without a care of clearance with zero damage so you know i i appreciate that and then and it's it's great people like yourself that have pushed those limits for us that have allowed us to continually try to improve the product. I mean, I think that's that's probably one of my biggest pet peeves and something that bothers me is, is if you look at the competitors of Buggy Whip and you look at who's out there as a competitor, 90% of them offer some form of a lifetime warranty. And they always say, oh, we offer a lifetime warranty. We offer a lifetime warranty. But if I bought my $50,000 UTV and I bought my $100,000 trailer and I bought my $100,000 truck and I put $2,000 in fuel in it to go to Oregon and I unload it and I get off the trailer and I drive 10 feet, my whip breaks. It does me no good because now yeah. on my vacation, I have to go buy another product. Sure. Lifetime warranties are awesome. Don't get me wrong. 
But if the product doesn't work when you need it to work, the warranty does you no good. And I, I talk to people about this all the time. I mean, it's a huge part of why we get the customer base we get. Yep. I'm not saying that we don't have issues. Everybody's got a product that fails, right? We do everything we can. We offer a lifetime warranty just like everybody else against manufacturer's defects. But I don't want it to fail. I want to get our percentage down, which it is less than 1%. We don't want to have a failure. If it's a failure, it's a failure on us as a company. It's a failure on me as an individual. It's a failure on the product. And so we do everything in our power to try to go above and beyond. You know, it works at, at in conditions that nobody's ever going to use it. But we do that because we don't ever want it to break. If it right. breaks, sure, call me. But at the end of the day, if you're coming over at Dune and that whip's not there and it's potentially your life, then that's a problem, right? I'm not saying that it doesn't happen. We just want to do everything we can to mitigate it so that we're able to build a product that's as indestructible as possible. Yeah, for sure. And and it's a brilliant approach, you know, for sure. I want to I want to get back to those early days of of Russell running, you know, in Glamis. <laughs> What what was your ride? What was your first ride out there? I want to hear some of this. Uh, the first car that I personally, well, the first the first thing I bought was a was a YXZ quad back in the day, and <laughs> it had Lone Star arms on it. I mean, it was a probably a thirty plus thousand dollar quad, and I look <laughs> back now and I'm like, that was brain damage, but. It was, you know, back it was before UTVs were as big as the, I don't even know if UTVs were around then. And man, that thing was fun. It was rad. And before that, I actually take the back. We had a, a 1985, 280, you know, your, your, your three wheelers, right. Two stroke. Yep. Three -wheeler. That was, that, that was still one of the best bikes this day. I think we all reminisce about owning one of those, right? Yeah. I've and, had a couple. <laughs> oh, they're awesome. They were awesome. That mini RCR one that's coming out all electric dude. that thing is rad i just yeah. i just saw that actually on one of your buggy whip instagram posts yeah um and of course it's got a it's got a buggy whip yeah, it has a whip so, on it but that thing yeah. is rad but but started sure. out at three wheelers went to quads then i bought a mike mazone uh old school mid travel car god that guy was brilliant made amazing cars Volkswagen motor, big horsepower, um, just an incredible, I still have it to this day. I'll never get rid of that car. It's just fun. When the dunes are clean, that is one of the funnest cars you'll ever drive, but you got to drive it 10 minutes after a windstorm before everybody else in the dunes. It right. is phenomenal <laughs> for that 10 minutes. Um, and then, and then I moved into the UTV thing and started with a Can-Am and now I'm riding in players pro R's and, and man, what an evolution the UTV officially oh, yeah. is made um but in the early days it was a quad it was you know load up on the gear and go out on the quad little dim headlight at night and man those were the funnest days right there was nothing like you know it just took so long to get across the dunes and so long to ride and it, it's just they were so fun yeah so fun well and you were you were um not everybody could do it no you, you know that no. was the thing like like now anybody pretty much anybody can go out and buy a side-by-side -side that has yeah. horsepower that handles um yeah. they can't all drive them like you or i or you know some of our other friends uh right. cole mr <laughs> stuntman um but uh but you know back in the day on the on the quads i mean or the three-wheelers for that matter dude yeah. Not yeah. very few people could ride a three wheeler effectively, you know, and they were tough. They they could get sideways on you quick in the dunes, and it it was ugly fast. I I got <laughs> yeah, I got eight by one up in Christmas Valley, Oregon, actually. Yeah, and I was not a spring chicken at that time. I mean, that was <laughs> only that was probably only um, man, probably only twenty or twenty two years ago. So wow not that long ago and of course i i had a 350x and i you know i bought it i loved it but then it's like okay i gotta do more i need more 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 and uh you know it ended up with like 13 and a half to one compression and <laughs> yeah. you know it was it was stupid twist throttle which was the dumbest thing you could ever do on a three-wheeler <laughs> It was if like you, the first upgrade that everybody did though. Yeah. Pull some throttle off, throw that in the trash and go to a twist throttle instantly. 
Yeah, but as as you know, having ridden them, um, if you get in a full lock slide like like a right hander slide full lock, yeah, your arm is pinned against right. a gas tank. Like yeah. you got you got very little options on how to move the throttle <laughs> at that point. And uh yeah, it was it was just that was probably one of the dumbest things I ever did, you know, on a three wheeler, but uh yeah, but, and how uh, fun were they though, right? Like that's oh yeah, you know, it's it's crazy to think how much off-road has evolved in just the last 10 years. Oh yeah. You know, I mean sure. it's insane to think what off-roads evolved in the last 10 years, even sand cars. You know, you were still you were still Chenoworth and Mike Mazones and those cars were still being built in the 90s, right? You still right. have Puma Craft back in the 90s. You know, it was until the now you got cars that are 2,500 plus horsepower is doing 170 miles an hour with 30 inches of travel, right? I mean, right. it's insane how much that you can go buy a stock Pro R right out of the box out does 90 plus miles an hour with 30 plus inches of travel. I mean, how we've evolved is insanity as a, as as off road. It's just amazing. Yeah, it really, really is. And you know, I'm I'm always and forever thankful you know, for Rob Muzzy bringing me into the fold back, you know, 07, sure. um, when, you know, I mean, the very first razor came out and everybody was like, Oh my God, you know, and now <laughs> you, now they, they were crazy. Like they're little mini, you know, Baja bugs, Baja remember buggies, the, basically. Remember the $25,000 rhinos with a $6,000, Baja designs light on the top yeah. that you launch off the dunes that had no suspension. I mean, pure <laughs> death. Yeah. In one of those golf carts. That's that's what I tell people. I, I started in the side by side industry when rhinos and terexes were cool. Oh yeah. Uh-huh. You know, so yeah. It's like, but like you said, the evolution, I mean, you know, it's it's been massively quick in the industry. So, um so here's the question for you since okay. we're on the utv subject this is the question you were talking about earlier this is the question right all right okay, so new can-am drops last night saw that nearly forty-eight thousand for a loaded can-am Whew. right 47 and 800 or something we'll call it forty-eight thousand for last okay night. let's say by the time you're out the door you're at least going to be $54,000, right? Yeah. Let's just, let's, let's cut it like it is. But we all know that that off-road is changing, right? The, the cars are becoming amazing vehicles, but they're, they're, they're cresting that $50,000 mark. And you're seeing the, the questions online, you know, Hey, I can go buy a Toyota Tacoma. Now I can go get a Jeep for this and drive it every day. Right. We're, we're, resting into getting into what you can get a car to drive nine to five. But one of the questions that was posed actually by Chuck at Pro Eagle, I thought it was a fair comparison, was he said he wants to see data from the boating market. And I don't know anything about the boating market, but boats are the same thing, right? They're getting more and more expensive. So how is that sport growing and continue to grow? Or is that sport, you know, how does that sport continue to grow with boats becoming what they are, right? And how do we you know, you don't see lakes getting shut down like you do see off-road areas getting shut down, right? And so the question yeah. is, what is the evolution over the next 10 years? What are we going to see? You know, I think personally where we're going to see manufacturers go is closed cabs. You know, you look at the new Expedition, right? Right. Suspension, closed cab, motor, has everything you want. And so I wonder, and, and it's an interesting question, are we going to see manufacturers start to go towards street legal? Are we going to see them make vehicles and start to cross that that line into getting into street legalness? I mean, where does this industry go? It's a and and when you compare it to the boating market and what the boating market is really doing, how does it compare to that? That is a luxury item, probably more luxurious than UTVs in a lot of respect. You know, I, um, I don't know. So is the question the comparison? Yeah, yeah. How did how does it compare to the boating market? Um it's the the utv market is definitely compared to the boating market is in its infancy without a doubt um it is growing rapidly 
uh, whereas the bony market kind of went through its styles and changes, I would say back maybe in the 70s. Okay. Um, and then they started getting holes dialed in. They started as technology got better. Um, they started with step step plane holes and stuff like that sure. um, to get holes, bigger boats, heavier boats to plane quicker. Um, it's a lot really comparatively to the side-by-side -side industry with the evolution of the CVT and the clutching and, and um, now, you know, like Ken Am has their, I can't remember what they call it, but their, their uh, quote, my buddy Dustin Battleaxe Jones, uh, you know, the no lift shift. And right. is that is that the next step, really? Or, you know, for me, I think there's a certain amount of market in the UTVs that really have to have that um, CVT because right. um, people don't know how to shift. <laughs> Nowadays, you're you're not wrong in what you're saying. I think I think yeah. that's I, and and honestly, I mean, let's look at the Pro R. It's a phenomenal. It is it is by far my most favorite phenomenal car I've ever driven. And it has a CVT. They figured it out. They figured out the science behind it. I'm running 35 inch Sandcraft paddles on it, and the car does amazing on a CVT. Yeah. So I, I'm not opposed to a CVT belt. I think it's great. the The question is in the boating market as the boating market become stagnant, the buyers are the buyers at this point. You're not seeing new people enter the boating market. You, what you're seeing is Lauren has a boat. Let's go hang out with Lauren. Are we going to see that crossover into the UTV market now where you're going to see, Hey, Russ has a UTV. Let's go hang out at his camp and ride in his UTV. Right. Is that where we're going as a, as a, before it was accessible to everybody, but as we get into the $50,000 mark, are we taking that accessibility away from people? Or are we just taking families that would have had six quads and two dirt bikes and now compiling that into one $50,000 UTV? Yeah, as, as far as that goes, I see, um, especially being out here in Havasu, you know, and maybe this isn't necessarily a true indicator of everywhere, but the boat market is still growing like crazy. You think uh, so? Yeah, I, I don't. I think it's far from plateau because uh. the consumer's taste, the styles keep changing. You know, whereas like eight years ago, everybody wanted um, a sport cat. You know, <laughs> yeah. now. Yeah. Now those sport cat people are getting rid of their sport cats and going to like DCBs, 140 yeah. mile an hour boats, or they're going to the twin open cockpit, like the Cobra that's 140 mile an hour boat, or they're going to center consoles, um, which has become just unbelievably big in the recreation industry. I mean, they're they're building luxury recreational center consoles right. that you know everywhere from twenty eight feet to fifty eight feet, and these guys are and they're not fishing boats, you know, right. they're not the old whaler, um, right? And they're selling <laughs> yeah. the crap out of them. So, but I, is that market growing, or are we just taking? The, the guys that had boats here and we're cycling them down and we're just kind of running this, this loop that the people that are in the boating market, it's not growing. It's just shifting. It's doing this like circle of rotation. I wonder. I think it's growing. Mm. It's, I don't think it's growing huge, but I do think it's growing because as you know, the people that have the most people that have like the 97 Chaparral, you know, are going, right. oh, well, you know, I'm going to step it up this year. Um, and so-and-so has gotten rid of their, you know, whatever their Nordic. And so I'm going to step up to that because they bought a bigger, newer style boat. 
And so I don't think it's growing necessarily through new boat sales much because I think it, their people are graduating, Mm -hmm. but I think the used boat sales and the economy boat sales are, um, growing. And, uh, you know, I think it's much the same that you'll see in side by sides as they grow and as they've hit that 50 and $60,000 mark, which, you know, you and I talked about years ago, like, can you believe that, you know, people are going to spend 40 grand on a side by side completely <laughs> loaded from the dealer, you know? Yeah. Now you're, you're 55,000 plus all your extras, whips and, right. jets and tires and paddles and that it's, it's a $70,000 car before you hit the dunes. And so it, it's very interesting. I think it, I think it, Number two, what it shows you, it's, it's a testament to how incredible the off-road market is and how yes. many people have come into it, how much culture there is, right? You're seeing people from other countries. You know, I remember at King of the Hammers this year, I had two guys that flew all the way here from Australia. I had a couple guys in my booth that flew here from Israel, right? Really cool talking to them, you know, just seeing how much it's grown across every country, every facet of the world, and it continues to grow. And so it's, you know, you, you bring up the old 900 razor days. You don't really, really see those anymore. They've kind of washed away and went away. Right. So a lot of this stuff has, has kind of gone by the wayside and gone away. And, and so, but are we going to see that now? Right. Are the turbo S's and, and the turbo R's and these cars, they're going to stay around for years to come. We're not going to necessarily see these cars fade away anymore, but we're going to see them continually cycle through the market. Now, I think as, as you see cars get more expensive. Yeah, I would, I would agree with that. I think you're going to get more entry level people buying used machines. Um, That really aren't entry level machines anymore, which is great. Right. And then I, I think you're going to see that because the, you know, it used to be, and, and we joke about this all the time, back when the Razor 800 came out and <laughs> was released in late mid of, I think announced mid 07 and first production run was like September of 07. Right. Right. Um, right. And, you know, Joe Blow could go out and buy one and finance it for $97 a month, Uh, (laughs) you know, really. And, and so it's like, Oh, a hundred bucks a month. Yeah. I can afford that. And when the 900 came out, uh, the XP 900 came out, it was groundbreaking trend setting just as much as the razor 800 was, um, you know, the razor 800 was 50, advertised at 52 crank horsepower whereas like the rhinos and terexes of the day were like 32 you know and they weighed 800 pounds 600 pounds more and the razor 800 had more travel factory at 10 inches and nine 11 inches or nine inches or something lower center of gravity um all this stuff you know so you really got to hand it to Polaris for, for doing what they've done to this industry. I mean, really, absolutely. you got to hand it to them for what they've done and what they've created. I mean, if you look back at history and you look at the three-wheeler days, I mean, I think that's why you haven't seen Kawasaki push. That's why you haven't seen Honda push. That's why you haven't seen Yamaha push. They remember those days, right? Oh, yeah. And, and how bad it was back then and what came of it. And so it's, it's really a testament to how incredible a company like Polaris is that kind of, like you said, started with that 900 and hasn't really stopped, has had their foot on the gas pushing to evolve off-road nonstop. I mean, even with their factory racing team, I mean, they actually have a legitimate like NASCAR style factory racing team that's going out there and winning races. I mean, it's, it's incredible. No knock to, to the incredible racers that are out there before the pro R team came along, but it's really incredible to see how much they're pushing to evolve this industry. Yeah, absolutely. And, and, you know, I've, I've often joked somewhat seriously 
that uh, um, you know every other side by side sports side by side manufacturer in the industry should be paying Polaris a little royalty for <laughs> you know all the time they spent in court and all that, and really Polaris should be paying Yamaha for the battles that they fought and won on the Rhino. Sure. Uh, um, to begin with, but yeah, Polaris has done a great job and, you know, they, they have marketed, they had, uh, I mean, the Razor 800 was a very inexpensive product at the time, right? You know, it was, and it was at the time highly capable. I mean, you could take a stock Razor 800 and put, uh, you know, Sandstar 25s on it <laughs> yeah. and, and go out and shred any big boy rhino. Right. Um, you know, and uh, then it was the nine, like I said, the 900. Um, and then, you know, the 1000, when they popped the 1000, and um, I think they announced it in July of 13 at the yep. dealer meeting. Mm -hmm. And, you know, we, I was with Muzzy's at the time, just a little background insight. And we had the opportunity to be involved um, with, we have been involved with the Polaris engine development program uh, since about 2012. Um, and so we had the opportunity to have some input and be involved with the, with the 1000. And when, um, uh you know when it was released everybody was like oh my god this thing's insane you know it's got <laughs> so much more travel than anybody else and and um you know at muzzies we were i mean we have one of the very first ones that you could get your hands on because it was like okay well we have rj we have mitchy we have ryan piplick and right. we need a race motor that's legal right. in work so you know, I, I will never forget that very first year, 2000, uh, uh, or the second, I think it was maybe the second year of Camp Razor. Um, it was 2013 and sure. we had a XP 1000 that nobody knew, but it had the full um works production 1000 legal race motor in it when we went to camp razor that year and um dude we smoked everybody right. like we were six car lengths on every other <laughs> 1000 up up uh olds you know and people are like what the hell look well, at where it's at now i mean look at what evo's doing with oh, yeah. on these cars I and mean, it's 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 nuts where we're going right i mean it really I'm is really curious to see what the next 10 years hold I, i'm what i'm curious about are are we going to see horsepower and travel gains or are we going to see closed cab and air condition is that the is that the evolution are we moving further away we've hit where we're going to hit with suspension and horsepower and now we're moving into luxury right touch screens you know, look at their new seats, heated and cooled from the factory. Vents right. go in. I think AC is in the next two years. I think we will have AC in the next two years. That's my prediction. I'm putting it out there. Ah, nice. Good call. I, I don't know. I think there's, I think that there will be a market for those um, luxury UTVs, if you will. Sure. And, but I think there's, the strongest side of the market is still going to be the raw horsepower, raw handling um, side of things. But what I do think that, that we haven't talked about, yes, we've seen the prices go nuts. Sure. Um, what I do think is I think you're going to see some manufacturers um, release some more budget friendly machines that to try and entice more 
more entry level people to buy a new machine over buying a used machine. That's an interesting perspective. I, I mean, I it will be interesting to see how that goes down. I I think you know the question is, are you going to see you know when you look at a four seat Can Am, you know one of the things that that Chuck from Pro Eagle and myself are talking about when you see a four seat Can Am for forty eight thousand, you're going to see somebody look at a Kawasaki or a Honda now and go, well for twenty five this fits what I need it to do. I can buy some rims and tires and I'm out the door for 35,000 yeah. versus out the door for nearly 60, right? Is that what we're going to see? Are we going, is that, is that where Honda and Kawasaki and Yamaha, is that the market they're settling into to say, those are, I owned a Honda and let me tell you what, it was a phenomenal UTV, right? Yeah. I had that car ran and ran and we could go rock crawling and we could go in the dunes was it the fastest no was it the slowest no? it's just a great honda car like everything honda does and so the question becomes is that the market that they're in right we're not going to try to compete here we're here this is our lane we're staying in it and all these people that want to be in this industry that want to go have fun that want to take their family out that want to participate and be part of what off-road is but not be in a $48,000 car are going to look at the Hondas now. Is that going to improve their stock? Are we going to see growth in that that we haven't seen before now? Uh, I think so. And I think that's kind of, that's kind of where I was going with that is I think with, with my comment was, I think you're going to see more of those entry level UTVs and side-by-sides Sure. like the krx like the right. talon um the yamaha armax um ugly as the same but a great machine every right. everybody that i know that has ever driven an armax loves it yeah. you know yeah and and so um and they're economical uh, and so yes, i terribly yes yeah so i think that you there's a niche there that is being filled by those guys that I think you're going to see. I feel like Polaris before can am for sure, but I feel like you're going to see Polaris in the next year drop something like a budget sport, naturally aspirated side-by-side -side, more than what they have but still budget um, with the, you know, I mean, there's, there's companies coming in like Hyson, you know, and another and, one. Yeah. Yeah. I mean, people laugh about Hyson, but you know, my, I have a good friend, Ronnie Renner that is an ambassador for them. And I've talked to him a couple of times and he beats the sh snot out of them right and is not unimpressed you know right but there again it's a naturally aspirated um entry level side sure. by side right sure. so sure. um so it's i gonna, think it's going to be interesting no matter what right it's going to be yeah, for sure to see where it goes and where it evolves and and where we go as an off-road community i, I mean i'm so thankful that we're seeing it grow right i not only do i love this sport and i love the people in it i just i'm very happy to see that it's continuing to go you know guys like yourself that were part of those entry level programs and have now seen it where it's at you know yeah. you've seen you know the red bull sand scramble you know looking at the flags behind you you know incredible events like that being held and and allowing to take the everyday guy and have him be part of something cool. Right. And that's, yeah. that's what's so great about this, about this community is that you're seeing generations of kids start racing in a, in a 170 and growing up in Polaris and, and getting to the point where they can race on a factory team. I mean, this is stuff that you only saw in circle dirt track and, and that kind of stuff. And now you're seeing it evolve and off road. And I think it's fantastic where we're going. Yeah. I think, uh, you know, you saw it, in the U.S. and certainly, you know, in the short track, dirt track, um, paved sure. ovals, in Europe more um, karting, but you know, so it was. I having ran a, a traveling touring kart team, 
um, for a couple of years. It's not cheap. No. You know, no. racing a side by side. Uh, if you want to get into racing, racing a side by side or a UTV, um, it is relatively inexpensive comparatively to, you know, I've also run circle track teams and tour, uh, Northwest tour and built cars and chassis for years. And, and, you know, what, what we had into our tour car, um, in one year and to do the circuit that we were doing, dude, you, you could run an entire desert season in the pro turbo class, um, you know, in one of these desert series and come out with money in your pocket, you know? So, um, definitely, definitely progression, but I think, um, as it progresses, I think we're going to continue to see everybody push the limits, the horsepower, the suspension, yeah. all that on the brute strength, glamorous, um, race car side of things. But I also think you're going to see the manufacturers start going, we need to bring more people in. And so we need to have something to set the hook, right? Because, I mean, for karting, as an example, you could, you know, you can go spend $45 and, and race a go-kart at sure. your local K1, Yeah, you know? So, okay, you do that a few times. You decide you want to do it. You drop a couple of grand or five grand on, on a turnkey cart. You go out, you get addicted. That's how you set the hook, right? So how is the UTV and side-by-side -side industry setting the hook right now? And you brought up a good point with the 170s, the 200s, the 250s. Sure. Um, that's definitely the a way that they're bringing new life in. But these kids can't go you know, when they're 16 or 18 and they've driven dad's car this whole time, they want their own car. They're not going to go buy a $60,000 car. They're going to go buy a $25,000 car. Sure. So, you know, I think that we're going to see, I wouldn't say the industry dividing, but I would, I would say there's going to be two levels maybe three with, with the comfort level, you know, the new like air conditioned and heated seats. I mean, I remember you had heated seats in the, in the Can-Am. Yeah. And, I had uh, heated seats back then. Yeah. And I really you can't, it's you. cold at night. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Especially I, at Amherst. Yeah. I was going to say, I ridiculed you about it until 5 a.m. when I had to get it in the booth at Hammers. <laughs> and then it was all of a sudden, this is nice. And then it, I didn't want to get out of it. Yeah, yeah, for sure. So, um, you know, and there's something to be said for that market. And we're seeing that in yeah. the crossover UTV market as far as like the Expedition, the Defender, um, you know, the new Kawasaki Ridge. I mean, they've gone from utilitarian to sport utility to ultimate luxury sport utility utilitarian look at look at the new expedition i mean it's, yeah. it's like, like you said i mean you put hcr arms on it then you've got a mid-travel air-conditioned car sparco racing seats in it right it is right. a little doable rad car right and it's got ac and heat i mean how can you beat it i mean that is where we're at it's just so rad to see man it's 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 exciting to see where they're going it's exciting to see what these manufacturers are doing and and i'm very excited to, to see what the next evolution is yeah me too and you know it was uh i was blessed you know to be involved in the industry very early on and sure and watch a lot of the evolution and and be involved behind the scenes a lot of times in the evolution where 
you know, I couldn't say, hey, there's a performance package. There's a Jagged X performance package coming out in six months. Um, and I just happen to know exactly what the cam grinds are, um, you know, or whatever. But, uh, but yeah, man, it's, it's exciting for sure. And exciting time. And, and I think we're about to go through a change where you're going to start to see, you know, that there's no cutting it around, right. It's slowing. And I think people yeah. are having to, to work harder for that sale and having to, to show what differs them from somebody else. And, and, uh, you know, for me, when we look at the UTV side, that's why I have fully backed Polaris and went the direction they're going, you know, and and you look at what they do at TakeOver and it's actual Polaris employees there and there's actually reps there to help. And 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 the story that gets me is this kid came up while we were at TakeOver and he was like, hey, I need an alignment. You know, this 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 thing's not even drivable. I don't know what I did. And rather than turn them away or say, hey, we can't help you, the guy went in the thing and got tools and, yeah, it was a backyard alignment, but he made it work for that kid for the weekend. And when you see a company that has that kind of passion, that sure. isn't just trying to sell you a car, they're at the event, whether it's small or large, no matter the crowd, they're there not only to let you show what they have now, but to help you with what you have. I don't know that you can find a better company that's trying to evolve off-road right now as much as Polaris is. And, and I think that's that's just a statement to who they are. Yeah, I think they've made a big statement on that um, way early on with Camp Razor yeah, and for sure. um, all of that. And I think maybe midstream, they lost vision of where they were going or who they were. But I think they gathered that back up and, and kudos to uh some of the people over there that, that you and i are both both know well and are good friends with for for reeling that in and bringing that back and and right. refocusing the entire company you know yeah as far as the utv side-by-side -side market goes um and it really is a very few individuals that really fought that battle and kudos to them um because you're right, they they support like uh, virtually no other brand right now, you know. So they support the community. They're not there just to sell a car, and it's it, you know Chuck and I at Pro Eagle. We talk, you know, we're best friends, and we talk a lot about this. You know, it's the same reason we're at events. We're, we're yes, sure. we're showing you what we have for whips, but I'm also there to go. How can I help? You know, do you have an issue? Can we take care of it? Can we fix it? You know, and, and Chuck's the same way. He's there to fix your jack or take care of you. You know, we want to be just as much involved with the community. I want to be there to ride with everybody. And, and I think you see that with great companies that have stood the test of time and then have not fallen off the SDR motorsports, the DRTs, right? They, they're out there riding with everybody else. They're out there yep. participating in the community. They're out there shaking the customer's hand and not just trying to sell them a product, but be like, hey, can I just go ride with you or what can I do to help or let's go hang out. And that's, that's a big part of what we want to do. And part of what's made us successful. And I can't think enough of those incredible customers we have that we've become friends with and see at these shows and see them year after year after year. And that's been just incredible. Yeah. Really, really. Um, you know, the off-road community is, I always say, you know, it's a huge industry, but it's a small family. Yeah. You know, and um, we saw that, you know, when the Razor came out, everybody and their brother built cages and very few companies made it through 09 and 2010, you know. And we're and, about to go through it again. Yeah. Yeah. Very good possibility of that. And I yeah. think, but the ones that made it through there are still exist now. A lot of the great companies that you sure. mentioned. So. Yeah, you, you just, you got to be part of the community, you know, you need to be out sure. there, you need to be riding with them and participating with them and, and being able to say, hey, I'm I'm here with you guys, I, I understand, how, what can we do to be better, how can we help to make a better product for you? For sure, and that's a great example of, of you know, how to, how to be a valued part of the industry not just as a person or an individual, but as your company also. Yeah. Um, so yeah, man, just great, great job. 
the uh dude we we got on a whole different tangent there other than <laughs> other than russell's history but uh you know what we're we're pushed up on time and uh i don't want to hold you but no, we're, uh, we're good i i just i, I want to say thank you very much and and, and really, I want to say thank you to, to all your listeners and anybody that's buying Buggy Whip. I mean, you're the reason we're able to come here every day without you as a customer. None of this is possible, right? So if we make a mistake, you know, we apologize and, and we're there to stand behind our product and, and we want to be part of this community and we want to make a great product. And we try every day to make something that doesn't fail, that works hard and, and does what it's supposed to for you guys. Yeah, and, and you do a great job at that. And you have... That. And, you know, it's, um, and the company has for ever since 1967. We are know? still the same family owned company that we were then. I mean, we have not changed. It's it was from my grandfather to me and that I'm hoping I can pass it on to the next generation. And we're not, uh, not that there's anything wrong with big corporations. We're a family owned company like we've been, and we want to just make great products, no matter who you are or where you come from, you know, to just give you a little bit of history on this. So in 2015, yeah. when my grandfather passed away, um, you know, the market had shifted, right. It had moved away from the traditional fiberglass and you had led whips now. And the struggle for us is that what we did, we did such a good job at it to just go out there and release a product and say, here's this that wasn't in our nature, wasn't in our DNA. And so to be honest, the outer coating that we created was actually developed uh, with several other companies. And we spent the, the total money spent was in the millions to create it. And before that product was created, there was actually no UV truly clear shrink tubing designed to be clear in that, right? That, that segment yeah. had never done. So when we came through and said, well, we want to create this, we actually create a product that gets applied a certain way and gets done a certain way that has those attributes in it. And so there's actually multiple new divisions that are out there creating clear protective coating that's UV resistant for that purpose. So we wanted to not just create an LED whip, but create something that was totally different. You know, we didn't know how you were going to use it. So we wanted the coatings to be used and, and you to use it in any weather condition and leave it in the sun. And so we worked really hard for multiple years before we released it. And we stood our ground and made a product here in the U.S. and did the things and didn't just go overseas. And, and I think it's made us who we are today. Yeah, absolutely. And, and you know, to that, um, I believe that uh, there you have been the only LED safety whip in outer space. Uh, we did send some to space, yes. Yeah, uh, I remember that. Cool. Yeah, you were there when that happened. The guy yeah. we met at King of the Hammers, yeah. Yes, sir. That's, yeah, I, uh, we're, we're probably one of only, we're probably the only company, but we actually ship our product back to China to be used in mines. They yeah. have such bad luck with the product over there that they actually buy our product and ship it in containers back to the mines in China to actually be used because we're the only product that doesn't fail. I mean, right. I, I, you know, they make 90% of the market, the world market, and we're, we're, we're building a product here and shipping it over there. We're one of the few that ships into that country instead of right. out of that country. Yeah. Yeah. It's, it's funny, you know, and, and a lot of times, you know, I'll get questions at events and stuff about the product. And I, I tell a very brief, you know, a brief history of, you know, the company, your grandfather started it, sure. unfortunately, when he passed away, um, fortunately for the company, you took over and had a whole new vision and, and are, are driven and stubborn and made it happen and did I, set your that. own <laughs> mark on the company, really, whereas, yeah. you know, and it's so cool to see going back to Super Mario's rig, you know, his, his old Trinith. He's got your grandpa's whip from 1973 or whatever on one side and your lighted whip <laughs> that you designed and you pushed for and you created uh, on the other side. So, 
you know, it's really cool. I'm sure he's not the only one out there. And, uh, no. you know, it's just rad. I mean, to be, you know, it, and one. I, well, I, I appreciate you saying that. And, 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 and honestly, my success is due to multiple people. I, I, I want to be the first person to say I'm, I'm really nobody, right? Sure. I, I, I had a vision and we did it, but there's so many people behind this and, and so many incredible people, not only in this industry, but that I've just met across the board, people like yourself, when I was struggling to try to figure out how to get out there and meeting you and you coming and showing me your work ethic and how you ran events and things like that meant a lot. You know, these friendships that build a lifetime and it's because of great people like yourself and, and people like Chuck from Pro Eagle yeah. and, and, and multiple friends that I can list that nobody knows who they are, but these guys that have <laughs> stood behind me when nobody else did. Right. And said, yeah, let's do it. How can we help? Right. You know, yeah. when I was first doing this, there was times where I was up, you know, four and five days straight. I had a buddy that would leave work early and come over and come to the shop and help me create and design and do things. And those are the people that make us successful, right? It's it's the community behind it that's important, not the product itself, right? And, and I just want to say thank you to every one of those, my dad, my mom, all those people that have helped us get here. That is our important, the Laurens of the world that have that have helped us to get where we're at nowadays is, is why we are who we are. Yeah, and, and who you are is the number one LED safety whip, oh, the you. safest, the brightest, the most durable, and I stand behind that. I mean, thank you. anybody wants to bring their product up and sword fight me, I will, <laughs> but, but I guarantee you, you lose because I have tested the product personally beyond what it should have taken. Aside from rolling it over, but I've been there to see them. Um, it's happened. Yeah. Yeah. And guess what? They still work. Ask Robbie Gordon. Um, yeah. Bruce Flint, another guy. It's, yeah. It's, it's just that stuff. It's, uh, we've been very fortunate and very blessed, and we put a lot of work behind it. And it's, and, and it's, it's very important to us at the end of the day, if we, can save one life it matters and, and the story that that rings the most true to me on this and, and i will never forget the story i had a, a a lady on a jeep write us in once and her husband at was in colorado driving home got stuck in some snow drifts and couldn't eventually after hours of trying to help people go, get unburied and hours of trying to get out of it eventually got stuck and there was nowhere to go and the the one thing that did work on his jeep he couldn't move was his light, his LED whip from us. And he, somebody, they don't know the distance away, saw the light, turned to his wife, said, I got to go somebody, see if somebody needs help. He came down, got the guy out of his car and the guy, had that guy not come there, he would have died of hypothermia. So yeah. that, that mother said that her son has a father and she has a husband for the rest of her life because of our product. And that's, you don't hear those stories, right? And they no. talk about it all the time. I can ask anybody this question and not one person in the world could answer me this. How many near misses did you have today? How many near misses did you have in your life today? Did the, did the chrome on your rim reflect when you were driving through a stoplight and somebody hit the brakes? You have no idea. So right. we never get to hear how what our product did to save or help somebody out. But what we want to do is we want to be that product we want to stand behind it and we want to make sure that it always works because if you're in the dunes and somebody sees it you may never know maybe they moved out of the way and that's why it's so important yes we want it to look cool but safety at the end of the day like we were talking about earlier these cars are getting so expensive they're so big and although they're safer your kids are in the back seat right we have we have kids and 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 um car seats now and baby yeah. and all these people. these are this is the most precious thing in the world to you and we want to make sure that you're seen and you're visible so that you don't have those issues yeah that's it's and, very and important it's a great core philosophy and that's part of why you know you are who you are and and buggy whip has had the success it has um and kudos to you your grandpa you know um man yeah i mean changing saving lives since 
1967. And Hopefully. like you said, the perspective is who knows how many. Right. You know, right. you just, you just don't know. And, and whether it's on Harley or a race car or, or whatever it is, we want to make sure it always works and it's always safe and it's always ready to go. And so, you know, we appreciate every one of the customers out there that's listening. You know, we're always an open source. You know, you can call us and say, hey, I'm having an issue. How do we fix this? You know, and, yep. and we really appreciate everybody. We're not trying to sell you a product. At the end of the day, yes, we make a product and yes, we sell, but it's more about what's behind it and being part of no matter who you are, being part of your community and hearing your story and seeing how we can help is what's important to us. Yeah, that's fantastic. Now, as we wrap up, I know you have uh, some industry partners and sp sponsors that you need to thank. And uh, man, you got to get those in there. Got to get the, the list is long. It's, it's, you know, there's, Honestly, there's so many incredible companies that we work with. There's, there's honestly not enough time in this podcast to say it. And, and, <laughs> and, and we have worked with incredible people, whether it's Madison at Honda or um, uh, different people along the way. But, you know, I want to thank one of the big people that we want to thank is Polaris, right? Yeah. They have just been an incredible company to work with. Um, not only are they using Buggy Whip on, on all their stuff and at Camp Razor and officials, but they've just been from every person there, whether it's a person setting up to, you know, sitting at Camp Razor and talking to the vice president and the president of the company, they've all been absolutely incredible and just kind-hearted and wonderful, wonderful people to work with. So can't thank them enough. Um, Pro Eagle is always there to help us out. Baja Design. Yeah, we, we've used Baja Designs since we were, since they started and we've never changed from that. So want to thank Baja Designs for always being with us. And, and the cool thing about Baja that, that I really have to hand out to them is just like us, we make a whip and we stay in our lane. I have seen Baja Designs comment on Instagram when somebody goes, hey, when are you going to come out with a whip? And they have literally commented and said, we use Buggy Whip. And I say the same thing. When people ask us, are you guys going to make rock lights? Are you guys going to do this? We use Baja Designs. And, right. and those true partnerships where you're not trying to cut each other up is just something I can't thank enough. Um, there's... Uh, you know, we, we want to thank PRP Seats. We work very well with PRP Seats. We've worked with them for many, many, many years. Um, and we also want to thank Sparco. Alan at Sparco has been an incredible help. Um, we have the Totally Lit Jack Challenge that was, is actually presented by Polaris, where we take a, a Polaris Pro Arm. We go to different events. You can jack it up. You can change the tire. You can really feel and feel what it's like to to be on a pit crew and feel what it's like to do it. And it doesn't matter whether you're a young kid. We had a kid at, at a show that was maybe four years old, five years old. And he <laughs> came up and he's like, Hey, can I try this? And we helped him and helped him get the tire off. Chuck did the whole thing and it made the kids day. And, and you talk about bringing people into the community. So just, we want to thank Sparko for being part of that. Um, Baja designs is part of that. Proline Wraps, Andrew over at Proline Wraps, he's been a big supporter of us for so many years. And great guy. Gotta love Andrew, right? Yes. His dad, his family, all of them, they all come to all the shows together. Great, great, great freaking people, man. Andrew's yeah. just a rock star. Um, and uh, we want to thank HCR Suspension, Brandon Twitchell, and all the guys up there. I mean, what an incredible group of guys. They're at every show. Um, they're always down to answer questions. You know, thing that's rad about Brandon and them is you ever have a question, they answer their phone, they're there to help just, the, and they make great stuff, right? And you know, yep. the testament of making great stuff, people are copying it. And to this day, they still get copied, but man, sure. they make incredible suspension. JL Audio, got to thank all the guys over at JL Audio. We've worked with them for a long time. So got to thank all those guys. Um, and I want to thank Tim at SDR. Tim at SDR is really Tim at SDR is is just, I mean, you know this. You've been in this since the yeah. start, right? Tim was building cars when nobody else was. Absolutely. He's just flat out and a very nice guy. He's smart. The thing I like about Tim that really impressed me is we we work with Warren Winch and Tom and all those guys over at Warren just make a phenomenal product. Worked with them for years. Can't say enough good stuff about their product. And 
what was incredible about Warren Winch is we were looking at a bumper that SDR made. They all make the same bumper. Everybody makes the same bumper. They all make it the same way. And the, the bumper, the way you want a winch mounted is you want the bolts to be just there really to hold the winch up. You don't want to pull against them because they'll just pull it out. It's aluminum. And so Warren gave us this full breakdown of, hey, this needs to be changed. And rather than Tim going, that's just the way we make a bumper, use it or don't. We took it back to Tim. Tim took it to his engineering department, completely redesigned the bumper from start to finish, completely changed the way that the bumper operates and works and everything else. 100% completely changed that product. And when he changed that product from start to finish, he made it work to exactly how the winch is supposed to work. So rather than being like, oh, hey, this is our product, he he listened to them didn't have an ego about it and said, cool, how can I make it better? I mean, who, who does that? You know? Yeah. That's, that's incredible. Sector seven that met those guys years ago, use their mirrors forever. Just, just a great, great, great mirror, a great product. Um, guys over at evolution power sports, Sam, Jim, Todd, I mean, Jacob, you know, they're, they're once again, family owned company. I mean, I think yep. that's, that's what we see through and through this industry is just great family owned companies that just do incredible stuff, right? Raceline wheels, rich. We all know rich, right? Oh, rich, yeah. God, rich has been in this industry forever. Love that guy. Um, but all the, all those guys at Raceline wheels, they, you know, make great trailer wheels and all that BFG tires. Um, you know, we use uh Sandcraft. Sandcraft tires are just flat out amazing. Um, best pal tire we've ever used. Honestly, um, they've just been great guys. And there's just, there's so many I can go yeah. on and on, but you know, the guy Landon, his whole family at DRT, you know, that's somebody you want to look at what off-road means. Look at Landon, right? Him, his kids, you know, Pete, all the guys, Mark, all those guys over there, they're family, right? They come to all the events. They're hanging out with everybody, right? Landon's the first guy. If, if you have an issue to come up and go, how can I fix it? I mean, that's, you just don't see that, right? And his kids are right by his side, um uh it's just it's just incredible right he's just amazing what he has done right and so can't say enough good stuff about him and um and that whole family over there we do you know secretly nobody knows but there i can't announce it on here but tim and i went along with <laughs> a, with an incredible person have a new product coming that's going to be launching here soon um and so that'll be out in the next couple of months. We'll announce that that's going to be going to be really huge for the UTV industry. So um, cool. there's just so many great people in this industry. I just can't say enough great things about all of them, Lauren, yourself included. Yeah. Oh, thank you. I appreciate that. That's yeah. uh, there yeah, you, so you work with some uh, really great people. And, you know, I worked with when I was with Muzzies, I worked with Tim a lot right from the inception um until we were you know closed uh in at the end of 15 so you know i'm very fond of tim and and the work that he does so yeah he's been, he's been incredible from start to finish right yeah. he's just he's he, a great guy he, he's he's the he's the leader of the of the pack right he's pushed he's pushed all of us to new heights and and For new sure. things and, and I mean, what do you, what do you say about somebody like that? Right. I mean, that's just, that's incredible. Yep. I, uh, I actually, the very first video that, it, uh, on social media that I had over a hundred thousand views on was a car that Tim built, um, that had our muzzy exhaust on it. And it was just a walk around video of it at camp razor. Um, and, Data was so bad back then that <laughs> I had to wait. I set an alarm to wake me up at 1.45 in the morning to post the video. And it had over 100,000 views in 24 hours. Wow. So, um, and when was that? Oh, man, that would have been probably 2013 or 14. Wow. Yeah, it was one of his super custom four seaters, uh, full just, body work and everything. Oh, it was crazy. Just so. as awesome. I mean, yeah, he's just a great guy. I mean, the, the the guy that the other guy that you know in this industry that I've been 
friends with for so many years. And, and honestly, his product is, is the best product I've ever seen, but it's Ian at full throttle batteries. If you've ever had the chance to you, I know you've met him and hung oh, out. Oh yeah. Him. Yep. Let me tell you what, there is not motorhome trailer, UTVs, forklift, everything we have runs full throttle batteries. And I have never had a single issue. I have a full throttle battery that is seven years old and a can am and still works to this day. Wow. That's and crazy. Ian's the guy, like he does all the, the BDRs and does all the rides. He's just such a, he's another one of those dudes in this industry that just, just, he'll just brighten your day. He's just a great guy. Been in yeah. it forever. He's just a great, great, great guy. That's awesome. All right. Well, with that, I think uh, we should hit the end of the, hit the end of the record. Russell, thank you so much. I appreciate you. Um, if you want to hang out while I do my closing credits, you're welcome to. Otherwise, I appreciate you, brother. It's great to have you on. Um, you're the best, Lauren. I, I so can't thank you enough for this opportunity. And 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 I want to thank if anybody's out there that hears us. You know, we appreciate each and every one of you guys. I mean, really, without customers, we can't do this. And so I appreciate you guys more than you'll ever know. And, and Lauren, thank you for the opportunity. I just can't thank all you guys enough. Absolutely. Hit us once more with the website and buggywhip.com. Buggywhip.com. That's it. And Instagram is at Buggy, Buggy Whip, Whip Inc. Inc. I-N-C. I-N-C, yes, sir. yeah. Yes, sir. Check them out. Go give them a follow. Give them a like. And while you're doing it, be sure to go to your streaming service and give us a like, a comment, and a share. And uh, be sure and tell us all your friends about us. We're thankful for all our loyal listeners. Super thankful for our great partners and sponsors, Kicker Performance Audio, for all your 12-volt personal audio needs. Find them at kicker.com, on Instagram, at Kicker Audio, on Facebook, Kicker. Every other Tuesday night, their live TV show on Facebook and their YouTube channel, Kicker Unmasked Live. Check it out. Bomber eyewear, bomber floating eyewear, bomber safety eyewear. The only eyewear Mad Dog wears. <laughs> Find them at bombereyewear.com or on Instagram at Bomber Eyewear. Of course, the Premix podcast, our man Cole, sharing his passion for all things desert racing through the lens of a camera. Slide into his DMs over on Instagram, the at symbol T A G P R E M I X P O D C A S T, and hit him up. Also available for your announcing and MC needs. Booking for 2025. So get in there and get them scheduled now. Kelsey Morrell Film, find her on Instagram at Kelsey Morrell Film for all your photography and film production, pre production, post production needs. Hit her up on Instagram at Kelsey Morrell Film. Of course, Hey Keeks Marketing, taking care of all of our logos our templates our social media needs helping us out with our website and she can help you with your website your social media you need an influencer campaign you need a website built whatever you need yo hey keeks or take the easy route look her up on the webs heykeeks.com or on instagram at hey keeks marketing all one word and man I want to thank Cole. I want to thank Russell. And uh, as Cole would say, be sure to, well, we'll see if he jumps in and finishes off with his speech. Make sure to rate, review, subscribe on your favorite streaming platform. Ah, there he is, that voice. Ah, that so smooth. Nice <laughs> yeah, with that, I want to thank you all. Thank all our loyal listeners. Hit up Buggy Whip. and. Uh, be sure, like I said, find us, share us with your friends. This is a great story. We've got so many. God bless America. God bless our troops. God bless our podcast. Mad Dog out.